Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. I am Pastor Barbara Seekford, and I'm just so glad that you have chosen to spend this time with us as we have gathered in this sacred moment to worship and to praise our Lord together. And so would you join me this morning in our opening prayer? So please unmute if you haven't done so already. When hatred and division separate us, God loves us together. Quarrels estrange us from one another. Christ lies. The way of reconciliation. And when we feel excluded and left out, spirit is our pain. And when all hope of fellowship seems lost. God's God's grace grace restores restores our hope. Um, let us worship God who makes us one. And so would you please join us in our opening hymn for this morning, One Bread, One Body. But now would you please mute as we sing together. Thank you. And we 
one body in this one scripture reading for this morning is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I will be reading some excerpts from there. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. For if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. We are finishing our sermon series today that's based on the book, Gospel Discipleship, Four Pathways for Christian Disciples. It's written by the Reverend Dr. Michelle Morris. And so if you are joining us today for the first time, well, welcome. You get to read the back of the book. You get to hear the ending before the beginning. And so I hope that you will go back and listen to some of the messages in the series. And if you haven't taken the assessment yet, would you please take the assessment? I know some of you struggled with the answers when you did take the assessment because they all seem to be good answers. And the truth is they are all good answers because the assessment is based on the scriptures, based on each of the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And so the idea is to pick the answer that resonates with you the most. And if you still struggle with that, then some of you could very well be what Morris calls multi-typers. Uh, and that just means that you resonate with a lot of different styles and you can uh, have a lot of those different characteristics. And so the easiest way to find that out is to actually take the paper assessment because then you'll have the results right in front of you and you'll be able to see that if you scored high, in the Mathean category that perhaps you only had one less answer in the Lucan category. And so you really are uh, pretty even and depending on the type of the day you're having uh, could result either way in that assessment. So if you need a copy of the paper assessment, just 
give me an email and I'll shoot it out to you. Um, but our scripture passage that we have this morning is one that we use often uh, as just a reminder of the fact that we are all different and we are all important and we all have different roles to play in the body of Christ. And hopefully now you might have some idea of how you might best be able to serve or how you might grow in your discipleship because Knowing our discipleship styles, I believe, will help us grow in our understanding and our relationship with Christ. By engaging in types of learning and activities that we actually enjoy, let's face it, we're more apt to participate, right? And so the more we participate, the more we'll learn and the more we'll grow. Learning more about ourselves is always a good thing. But I also hope that it helps us understand others, which in turn means we'll be able to work better together. Because I'm sure that as we were going through each of those discipleship styles, you could think of the name of a person who fit that category or had those characteristics. And so now we have some common language that we can use and understanding maybe of how we might work or be a little differently. For instance, think, think of your typical committee or ministry team. And Perhaps you're a Mathean and you know that Harry is on that team and he's a Lucan. Can you imagine what some of the struggles might be as they come together and try to work together? Think about it. What do we know about our Matheans? Well, our Matheans are our doers, right? They want a plan, they want an action plan, and they want to execute the action plan as quickly as possible. What do we know about our Lucans? Well, our Lucans are our relationship folks. And so they want to get to know everybody. And so they're going to enjoy sitting around and talking. It's going to be hard for them to come up with a plan because they want to get to know everybody first. And it's going to take them a little while to execute the plan because they don't like conflict and they're going to want to make sure that this plan is okay with everybody else. So can you see some of the struggles? Right? But now, when you go into a meeting, you know a little bit about yourself. You know a little bit about some of the other folks, probably, if you've been working together for a while. And so, as a Mathean, you know that if you've got a, a bunch of Lugans that are on this team with you, that you're going to have to find a way to develop some relationships. And work together in that aspect. At the same time, our Lugans will have to acknowledge that, all right, maybe they don't need to wait six months before putting a plan into action. But knowing that, being mindful and appreciative of each, other, each other's discipleship styles will help us as we work together. And hopefully, we can be intentional about how we work together. Another reason for doing this series was because I wanted to see if we could determine Yardley's predominant discipleship style. Morris writes that while we recognize that every person is uniquely created and uniquely reflects the image of God, we also recognize that each church is the body of Christ. And that body is 
varied and it's made up of individuals who in turn make up the world. But each body is specially made to reach people in their community. What do you think of that idea? That idea that each body of Christ is specially made to reach people in their community. Think about it. What is really the mission and vision for most Christian faith communities? We happen to be a member of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference of the United Methodist Church. And their vision statement is to be united in Christ, committed to transformation. And the mission statement is creating disciples, celebrating diversity, connecting communities, and commit, committing to love and justice. But don't those statements apply to most of our congregations? And in most of our, congreg in most of our communities or our, our neighborhoods or our cities, aren't there more or isn't there more than one church? Some of our communities, we've got church buildings on every corner, don't we? And so I agree with Morris. And I believe that each congregation has its own niche to fill. And so as a new pastor in this faith community, I believe that if we can get like 80% of our folks to take this assessment, that it will then in turn help us find our niche in the community that we're called to serve. Now, unfortunately, I haven't had 80% of our folks take the assessment yet, so I really don't have a dominant style that I can talk about for Yardley and what that might look like as we move forward. But I can share with you the results that we've gotten so far. I believe Denise has made a PowerPoint uh, slide. Do you have that, Denise? Is that handy? So we've had 22 folks take the assessment so far. And what I'm going to give you are the, um, the dominant characteristics. What the results show are the first and second characteristics. But so far we've got 11 Matheans who have the dominant characteristic. We have four folks who are dominant in the Markin category which you can see by the numbers on the screen that a lot of folks have Markins as their second category. Four are dominant Lucan, and we actually have two that are dominant Johannine. Thanks, Denise. And so I would encourage our committees and team leaders to please continue uh, to try to get our folks to take that assessment because I really believe that it will help in our development of faith formation and also as we think about our outreach and ministry um, ideas for the community. Mar says the key to avoid, the key is to avoid spending energy on designing a system that balances all four types because then you're trying to become a, faith, a different faith community than the one that you are, and you're most likely going to burn out. Just as our different early Christian communities gave rise to four distinct witnesses, that's why we have each of the four gospels that gives us uh, the story of Christ. So we are shaped in distinct Christian communities who resonate with diverse people in our communities. See, we understand that all of our churches are gifted but they, and they have a purpose. They have a purpose that they can live out for Christ in the very place and time with which they find themselves. And Discipleship isn't based on competition with other faith communities. It's based on cooperation. It's based on cooperation with 
the grace that's freely available for each of us. Morris writes that each congregation has been called by God to a special mission to a particular place and that God has gifted each church with a particular group of people who have the capacity to reach particular people in that community. And we become inauthentic when trying to be something that we're not. And ironically, we end up missing the gifted people that God sends our way. And so if you're a Lucan church, then celebrate that. Live into that. Because there's a good chance that the church across the street is the Mathean or the Markin or the Johannine. And so how can you work together celebrating the gifts that make each of you special? You know, it's, it's like doing ministry together. If, if the church across the street is doing a good job with a food pantry, then is that really something that your church needs to do? Or can you find ways to support that food pantry and then figure out another area of ministry that's needed in your community that someone else isn't doing? But let me clarify. Let me clarify that discovering the, the dominant discipleship style of the church is not saying that that's the only particular discipleship style that is welcomed. Any church that only has folks of one discipleship style within it is soon going to wither and die. Why? Because they're going to get very complacent. Because they're all going to agree. And because then there's not going to be anyone to challenge them into trying something new. And so there are some of you who are called to help others grow in their faith or their discipleship. And you do that by being in a congregation that isn't necessarily your dominant discipleship style. Because we often grow by encountering people who think differently than we are. And so if you're one of those folks, then you're in the right place. And you'll always, maybe always be a little frustrated with what's going on. But you are also the people that are going to help them grow and keep them from standing still and becoming too complacent in their walk with Christ. For we have been anointed because the spirit of the Lord is upon each and every one of us and is upon each and every one of our faith communities. And we've been anointed, anointed to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free. So let's be intentional about the adjustments that we're making, meaning they should make sense for who we are and who we are called to be. If we try to be something we're not or don't have the capacity to be, we're gonna end up just continuing to spin our wheels and then no one is happy. So let's live in, let's celebrate the individuals that each of us are, but also the body of Christ that we are called to be at this time, in this place, for this moment, for our community, for the world. Amen. In just a moment, we'll have our time of ministry music. And as always, I would just encourage you to 
just think of this time as a time to stop and to pause and to be aware of God's presence in your midst, but also to take a moment and in our chat, put any joys or concerns that you might have so that as we share together in prayer, we can be in prayer for each other. I would also encourage you to be thinking about your offering. Each week, I thank you for your financial generosity that makes ministry possible. But also, I want to encourage you to think about the week that's coming up and what is it about your life this week that you would like to offer to God. Join us now in our ministry of music. As we enter into our time of prayer together, let me share with you some of the joys and concerns that have been shared on our chat this morning. First, we uh, ask for prayer for all of our students and teachers and everyone that's involved in the education system as people get ready to head back to school. The prayer is may they have patience and grace with each other and themselves, and may they stay healthy. 
And just a note that Denise and I are hoping in the next couple of weeks to stop and visit all of our students and do a back to school blessing prayer with them. So if you haven't gotten an email from us or next week we're going to call and follow up to schedule some times, would you please let Denise or I know so that we can stop by? Usually we would be in the sanctuary and we would be doing a blessing of the backpacks. Uh, but this time that doesn't allow us to do that. And so we're coming to you uh, just because we know how difficult this time is for so many folks. And so we want to, to pray God's blessing upon you and, and look forward to that opportunity of sharing that time with you. Also, Nancy is asking for prayers for Anita, who is struggling with a difficult pregnancy. And we've got a praise. We heard last week that Dennis and Janice's grandson was going to be born, and Harrison made his way into the world on Thursday, and both he and mom are doing well. And we uh, Remember Denise, who's asking for uh, prayers, a friend of hers, Colleen, passed away after a heart transplant. And so we pray uh, for God's comfort and blessings to be with Colleen's husband and family and friends. Also, prayers for Ruth, Ruth Roth, Eastman, Harden, and Sheridan families. It's four World War II vets who passed away uh, this week. And um, also just giving thanks. She's given thanks that she was able to join Denise and others at Core Creek for Float Your Boat, Float Your Boat Night. And I understand that I think another one is being planned. And so keep checking the website or Facebook page to find out the date because all are welcome. All are welcome. Summer is starting to come to an end. And so let's get out and enjoy our activity outdoor activities as much as we can. Is there anyone else that has anything that they'd uh, like to share this morning that didn't get mentioned in the chat? All right, then I'm going to invite you to join me in a time of prayer. And I'm also going to invite you to unmute so that uh, when we get to the Lord's Prayer, portion of our prayer that you'll raise your voices and join me uh, praying together. So would you please join me in prayer? Most glorious, gracious, and holy God, as always, we just thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather. And though it's different than what we're used to, we've been at this for a little while now and we just are so grateful for the gift of technology that has allowed us to come together when we can't physically be in large gatherings. And so thank you. Thank you for this holy and sacred time that allows us to come together to worship you and to praise you, but also to share together in life, if only for just a little while, sharing our joys with each other and our struggles with each other, knowing that people will be holding us in prayer during the week. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the body of Christ, Lord, for those that walk with us on this journey. And we thank you for helping us, for guiding us, especially the, this particular faith community, Lord, um, that is known as Yardley United Methodist Church. You know the plans that you have for us. We just ask that you would continue to guide us and direct us to help us find our place that would best help us serve the community, that would best help us nourish each other as we grow in our faith together. 
Lord, we pray for those who have recently lost loved ones. You know the hole that has been left. And while we celebrate their life and, and are glad that there is no more suffering or pain for them, we know. We know the pain and suffering that is left for the folks behind that, have been, that are still here. And so fill those spaces, fill those holes and those places with your peace and your love and surround them with folks who will be able to carry them during this difficult time as they need to make all of the arrangements and do all of those things that again are so different during this time of this pandemic. We also thank you for the gift of new life. It's just a reminder every time we hear of a new babe being born of the miracle and that the hope for tomorrow and surround them, Lord, surround them with your care and keep them safe. And we think of Harrison and just pray that you would help him to grow, Lord. Help him to grow into the person that you already know him as. For those that are getting ready to have surgery, we pray your healing touch upon them. For those that are recovering from surgery, Lord, we pray your healing touch, your healing breath would be upon them so that their healing would just be happening faster than anyone could imagine. And that they would again sense your presence. We continue, Lord, to pray for all of the folks that are involved in our education system. And we pray for the parents who need to make the decisions as to how they're going to send their kids to school and what capacity that looks like this year, at least for the start of the school year. It's not an easy time for anyone, Lord, but you've promised to be with us in the midst. So help us to remember that, to know that we don't have to make this decision in isolation, that you're here. And Lord, we lift our voices now with our fellow Christians all around the world who have gathered now, who are worshiping and praising you, who are also praying the prayer that you taught your disciples, our Father. Father Lord, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, want to just take a moment and thank you for your giving. Thank you for your financial gifts that continue to make ministry possible, to make ministry happen. Thank you also, not just for your financial gifts, but for your time. For your time that you're so willingly, that you so willingly give uh, to help others. Because every, every week, somewhere along the line, I know that you are the answer to someone else's prayer. And so thank you for your willingness to be used by God and to serve where you're needed. Would you join me now as we ask God to bless our offerings? Faithful one, oh, please, un you are unmuted, okay. Faithful one, when hunger threatens our world, you bless us with dreams that we can save the children of our day. 
all things, dreams, or a world without want, may be blessed the lives of the children. Accept our gifts as tokens of our dreams and our commitment to make all people one in your holy name. Amen. 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 Would you join me now in our closing song for this morning, Someone Else Living in You? And would you please mute? Thank you. Drink, drink, drink of his spirit. Drink, drink, drink of his word. Hold, hold, hold to his teaching and show that you really have heard. Keep, keep, keep his commandments. Live, live, live in his grace. Love, love, love at his first love to you and run for the prize in the race. For there is someone else living in you. For there is someone else dwelling in you. For there is someone else building his kingdom in you. Yes, in you. For there is someone else living in you. For there is someone else dwelling in you. For there is someone else building his kingdom in you. Drink, drink, drink of his spirit. Drink, drink, drink of his word. Hold, hold, hold to his teaching and show that you really have heard. Thank, thank, thank him for daily bread. Thank, thank, thank him for love. Praise, praise, praise him for Jesus' blood. Salvation's a gift from above. And there's a new day waiting for you. And there's a new day of healing for you. And there's a new day Jesus will come back for you. Yes, for you. And there's a new day waiting for you. And there's a new day of healing for you. And there's a new day Jesus will come back to you. Drink, drink, drink of his spirit. Drink, drink, drink of his word. Hold, hold, hold to his teaching and show that you really have heard. Sing, sing, sing with your heart on fire. Sing, sing, sing with your mind. Pray, pray, pray in the spirit and love him with heart, soul, and mind. For there is someone else living in you. For there is someone else dwelling in you. For there is someone else building his kingdom in you. Yes, in you. For there is someone else living in you. For there is someone else dwelling in you. For there is someone else building his kingdom in you. For there is someone else living in you. For there is someone else dwelling in you. For there is someone else building his kingdom in you. If you don't have to rush off, we hope that you'll join us after our service this morning for a time of fellowship uh, so that we have a chance to get caught up with each other. Would you please unmute and join me in our benediction as we close our service for today. The God of dreams has brought us together. The God of dreams has brought one another well. The God of love has knit us together in unity. The God of love has God of hope sends us forth together. The God of peace forth in the world home. Amen. Thank you again for being here today. Amen.